What's going on, Core Community? Welcome back to another episode of Breaking the Seal. I know it's been a little bit since the last episode, but as you can probably tell, I'm in a new space with a bunch more room for my collection and stuff, so there'll be a lot more videos coming in this series. So today we have a very special episode. We are doing an unboxing and review of the Hot Toys Star Wars 501st Deluxe Clone Trooper. This is a figure I've been looking forward to for a very long time. I've had it pre-ordered for almost a year. And it's finally here, so it's time to get into this thing and see what how great it really is, because I think this is going to be probably the best hot toy of 2021. So I'll be right back once I get everything out of the box laid out here on the review table. I'll be right back. All right, here we are. We've got all the accessories out of the box. We'll take a, a look at the figure itself here in a minute after we look at all this stuff he comes with. As you can probably tell, this figure comes with a ton of accessories from all the hands, different interchangeable helmets, and all the weapons and stuff that he comes with. So I think right now what we'll do is take a look at every accessory individually and point out some of the details in them. So we'll start with the smaller stuff, a full thermal detonator, which he can of course hold and throw, which looks really good. Very well painted on this. And with that, he also comes with a half thermal detonator. I guess you could use it as like kind of a diorama piece place around your display. Next, he comes with a bunch of hands, the left hand trigger finger, the right hand open hand, which, you know, thermal detonator can fit right in there. You've got a right gesturing hand, a left gesturing hand, where you pointing with the index finger, left hand thumbs up, and with one final gesture for the right hand, those are all the hands he comes with. And then comes with this backpack, which is really cool. It's got a magnet and put stuff down in there. This magnetizes on. And then this, you put these straps over the arms and it's got a magnet here in the base of the backpack to go onto the back of the figure itself. Next, we'll look at the helmets. You only get these if you buy the deluxe version of this figure, which is why I would highly recommend getting the deluxe over the standard edition so you can get these helmets. First is the 332nd Attack Battalion helmet or the Ahsoka Clone Trooper helmet. This thing looks really cool. I love the orange paint on this. I think this came out great. Next is the one I'm going to be using on my display, the Phase 1 501st helmet. I just, have a, I just have a soft spot for the phase one helmet. I love this helmet. So I'll be using this one in my display and I'll show you how you put this on here in a minute when we look at the figure. And of course he comes with standard Hot Toys Star Wars display, Firework for Attack Battalion, and a flight stand. Pretty simple display. Um, no, nothing great or terrible to say about it, but you know, it's nice to have. Then moving into the main accessories, the weapons. First, he comes with his smaller standard clone blaster. I think you get this with all the clone releases. Commander Cody, Coruscant Guard, all the clones come with this blaster. This is, uh, I've heard this is actually a tripod, not a stock. That's why it doesn't go all the way back. I think this looks really good. Similar to what we saw with Commander Cody. Next up is the larger rifle. I think this one looks great. I believe these are called DC 15s. I could be wrong. There's a look at that. I think this is a great accessory. Love this rifle. Then you get the rocket launcher, which I think is great. I love this rocket launcher. I'm definitely think, thinking of incorporating this in my display somehow. You've got green dot on this side and on this side for the scope. The deluxe version exclusive rotary blaster which yes it does turn now i love the look of this rotary blaster i think this thing looks incredible the one <laughs> downside is they don't give you a hand that can actually fit over this grip what i've seen people do is they'll put just the regular open hand on it even though you can see it's just gonna fall off and then you use the left trigger finger on the bar but i have not been able to get it to actually stay on the figure or for him to hold this so that's kind of a bummer I wish they had included some kind of hand that was able to hold this because I think this is a really cool accessory and I wish I could use it. I'm sure I'll find some way to incorporate it into the display though. And then the final accessory is his jetpack. Now this jetpack is really well done. And of course, you just come with two flame effects that can peg to the bottom, just like that. And it's on a magnet opposed to the clips like on the Boba Fett figure, which I think is great because those clips are a pain and the magnet makes it so easy. I'll show you, I'll put this on the figure when we look at the figure. This little top piece can come out and it makes a rocket. You can peg in one of the fire effects, insert it, and it looks like he's firing a missile 
out of Jetpack. I think that attention to detail is like really, really fantastic. So very happy with how this came out. And that is all the accessories that came with this guy. So we'll punch out here, get a wide view and take a look at the figure itself. All right, we're back. We got the figure out of the box in here to look at. And I've also got some accessories laid out and I'm gonna be using in a pose after we're done taking a look at the figure and its articulation and stuff. So just first initial impressions of the figure. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I think the paint on this is incredible and the scuffing and battle damage and just how worn it looks i think is great i think it's much better than if they just did a complete shiny look i think the the scuffing and the scars and stuff really adds a lot of character to this and he does have his phase two helmet on and i'll actually show you swapping for the phase one helmet take it and then helmet comes off your pop and there's your phase one helmet on the figure i think this looks great i love the phase one helmet look on this and i love how all the armor it has these elastic bands under it so it's not going to get in the way too terribly bad for posing it does limit the articulation in some areas we'll take a look at right now so with the head is on a ball joint at the head and at the bottom of the neck so you get a lot of forward bend as you can see there not a lot of backward bend. He does hit this armor plate on his back in full 360, of course, if he chose to do so. Also keep in mind for this articulation section, this is my personal copy of the figure. So I will be going maybe a little light on how far he could possibly like push his limits. I don't want to push it too far because I don't want to damage it, of course. So with the arms, you can go up about that far. I bet if you moved around this shoulder pad, got it on top of the armor, you could get it to go farther. But that's fine for now. Elbows, they are, they sound like they're ratcheted. I think they're just a single bend. They would hit this armor piece anyway. So that's fine. Wrist is on a typical Hot Toys wrist peg and swivel front and back, everything you need to do with the wrist. Now, ab crunch wise, almost no ab crunch just because there's so much armor here, which is fine. And the legs are ratcheted. Go out about that far, I think it's fine. I bet you could get that to go farther if you really wanted to manipulate the armor around and needed it too. The knees, they are double knees, but they hit this armor plate here at the knee and it kind of stops it. So you can get it about 90, maybe a little farther than 90 degrees. Then the ankles, of course, go back and forth are on a rocker. And yeah, I think that's pretty much for articulation on this guy. I think it's pretty good, all things considered, for an armored figure, of course. I love the ratcheted joints. So you don't have to worry about them deteriorating over time and getting loose and now falling out of a pose. And speaking of poses, I'm gonna put this guy in a real quick pose and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I got him in a real quick pose for something I really like. Something, this is probably the big pose I'm gonna be using in my display for a little bit at least. So I got him up on the flight stand with the jetpack on there and the fire and the flame effects. Got his DC-15 in his hands. And I think this looks great. I love, I'm really, really impressed with this figure. I think this is some of Hot Toys best work. And I can't wait to see what they do with Captain Rex and other clones in the future. So I think that's going to be it for this episode of Breaking the Seal. If you liked what you saw here, please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments down below what figures you'd like to see maybe we review in the future. I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.